In this video, I want to talk about AI, and not AI-generated art, but large language models. This really sophisticated word prediction technology is just so useful, and I want to share with you how I'm using it as a 3D artist in 2024. Number one, decoding Blender's log of operations. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is pretty cool. I haven't seen anyone do this, so yeah, I'm really excited about this. So delete everything in your scene, add a monkey. Let's make a plane, extrude it like this. It's smooth, looking good. Let's make it wider. Let's add a camera and let's add a light. And now if we set this to render view, we can increase the light power, change the monkey to a smooth shape, control two to add a subdivision surface modifier, and let's give it a glossy material. And then let's set the word strength to zero. Now, what did I just do? Well, if you're unsure, you can split this viewport in half and you can set this editor type to info. And look at this, now we have all this text that is basically a log of operations for everything that has happened in this project file. But I'm really struggling to understand any of this because this is written in Python. So to turn this into a more readable text, maybe even a tutorial, we can use ChatGPT. So let's press A to select everything, Control C to copy, and then go to ChatGPT, you know, I'm using version four. And then I have a little bit of a prompt over here, which I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste this. Okay, so I've been tweaking this prompt for quite a while actually, so I'm going to leave it in the description. Feel free to use it. Please decode this log of operations from Blender into a brief tutorial. Don't include any of the code, simply write it as an intermediate level step-by-step -step tutorial. Don't use precise values for rotation, scale or location, round them down to something meaningful. Include hotkeys if needed. And then there's just the entire log of operations. So now let's see what we get. Oh, we got two results. Okay, press A to select all the objects you can see, press X to confirm to delete them. Oh my god, that's nice. Press Shift A to make a monkey. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. Use a trackball rotation. Yeah, I did use that. Yeah, and then G to move and confirm the action. I think I like the formatting on this to the right the best. This is kind of crazy, actually. You know, it just keeps going. I thought we would run out of tokens because I sent such a long message. Throughout this process, ensure frequently switch between object and edit mode as needed for different operations. Well, I'm not sure if I agree with that. Okay, yeah, so I think I'm gonna take the right one. Okay, so here's what we got. This tutorial guides you through the process of creating a simple scene in Blender featuring a modified monkey mesh, Suzanne, a plane, camera setup, lighting, and basic material application. It is intended for intermediate users familiar with Blender's interface and basic operations. Preparing the scene, adding and modifying Suzanne, we even got the hotkeys in here, creating a platform. Well, I'm not sure if I would call this a platform. It's, it's just a backdrop. This is good though. Significantly scale up the plane so it extends beyond the camera's view, creating a vast ground surface. That's true actually. Yeah, it looks like that. This is actually kind of crazy. By following these steps, you created a simple yet visually appealing scene in Blender, blah, blah, blah. ChatGPT, I give you a thumbs up, but I can't help but think. I know that I'm in this tutorial bubble right now where everything is about making tutorials and educational content for Blender, but what if you could make an add-on that just constantly listens to this log of operation and then, for example, in the top left corner here, you could have this history, so you can see what has been going on in Blender. No, wait, what if you could hook this up to Google Gemini with the YouTube extension, and in Blender, as you're working and as you're adding things to this list, you will get suggestions for tutorials, like based on what you've done in Blender. Can you imagine being stuck on something and just clicking this big red help button, and then Google Gemini with the YouTube extension can just search for the most relevant tutorial based on what you've done in your Blender file? I think that could be really nice for beginners trying to learn Blender. I wonder if that would be possible to set up using the API of Google Gemini. Anyways, that is how you can use ChatGPT to decode Blender's log of operations. Oh, and by the way, I'm not using AI to write my own tutorials. I find a lot of joy coming up with stuff, and that's like half the reason why I do this. So I don't think writing tutorials is the first thing I'm going to outsource with AI. But it's pretty cool that it works. I thought I'd just show you this proof of concept. So at this point in the video, I usually read from a script. But today I don't need to do that because Parsec is sponsoring this video. And as you all know, I'm using Parsec every single day. I've talked about this a lot before. Parsec is the best remote desktop software I've ever tried. I have a computer at home, I have a computer at work, and sometimes I have to walk all the way between those two computers. It's like the age old question, why did the 3D artist cross the road? It's to get to the other computer. And now I don't have to do that. Here's Blender on my laptop, and now I'm gonna connect it to my office PC using Parsec. So it's gonna be an encrypted peer-to-peer -peer connection and let's open the same blend file. Look at how smooth that is. Now I'm controlling my much more powerful desktop PC, which is at my office. And you know, it's actually possible to work from home with this. And it's kind of difficult to tell which is which now that I'm <laughs> moving back and forth like this. And that's just how smooth Parsec is, you know, 60 FPS, 4K, 
it's so good. So uh, yeah, I'm giving Parsec a big thumbs up, not only for sponsoring this video, but for actually making a really good software that I'm using every single day. So yeah, you should check out Parsec. Now let's get back to the video. The second way I use AI is to get quick insight into YouTube videos with Google Gemini. So if you're a 3D artist, chances are you have watched a lot of YouTube tutorials. And what's really cool is that since Google owns YouTube, you have Gemini, or previously Bard, which is owned by Google, which has indexed every single transcription of every single YouTube video. And you can search using this extension at YouTube. So you can basically ask any YouTube video a question, which is kind of insane, actually. So we can, for example, ask what are Polyfjord's cinematic lighting principles? and it's searching the YouTube video, or it's searching all YouTube videos, I guess. Oh, here we go. Use a large light source above the point of interest. Place the light closer to the background and further away from the point to create the most mysterious effect. Oh my God, use one light source to keep. Yeah, this is, ex <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this is pretty, <laughs> yeah, now you don't have to watch this video, I guess. That is, <laughs> I honestly didn't expect it to be that good. Okay, yeah, so this is pretty good. You know, I even got the Gemini Advanced. Let's actually try this for the next one. I literally got access to this like 15 minutes ago. So yeah, this is pretty cool. So let's go to YouTube and let's search for Blender. And I'm just gonna find one of the latest live streams from Blender Foundation. There's Pablo, he's amazing. Right click, copy video URL. Let's go at YouTube. Hi, can you give me a bullet point summary of this video, please? I'm trying to be polite, you know, it feels good. Oh, I'm unable to access this YouTube content. Let's try another one. Oh, yeah, so it was able to do it. Okay, so we got a new version of OpenColor.io, that's amazing. Blender 4.1 is the release where 4.0 gets stabilized and there's a lot of improvements in performance. Okay, cool. You know, I'm immediately starting to feel that uh, Pablo is doing a much better job at presenting this than this uh, bullet point list. So uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna keep watching uh, the Blender live streams. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it's cool to know that this is possible to do. So yeah, that is how you can use Google Gemini to get quick insight into any YouTube video. Number three, using AI to write Python scripts for Blender. So certain repetitive tasks in Blender can be done super quickly if you know how to write a script. I don't know how to write a script, but ChatGPT does. So if you explain what you want to do in Blender, you can just tell ChatGPT to turn that into a Python script, and chances are, if it's all about rotating, moving, scaling up, changing materials, stuff like that, ChatGPT can do it super easily. So here, for example, I have an SVG file of a tiger, and it is a lot of different SVG files because I want to turn it into this three-dimensional tiger effect. So I want to take each of these layers and move them up a little bit on the z-axis. So it becomes this three-dimensional effect. And I actually made a second channel video about this, so I highly recommend checking that out. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, hi, can you make a Blender script that offsets each object in the outliner by a value of 0.1 on the z-axis based on their order of appearance? And then you will get the script. Okay, so to render script in Blender, open Blender and load your project. In the text editor, click new, create a file, click run script. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to the text editor, new, I'm gonna call this script. And I'm gonna copy the code and I'm gonna paste this, control V and run the script. And nothing happened. It didn't work. Okay, so it's figuring it out. Okay, so let's copy this new script. Uh, let's paste it and uh, let's run it. Ah, perfect. We have our three-dimensional tiger. Okay, so now let's extrude this a little bit. Let's move it up. And look at that. Now we got this really cool 3D parallax effect. So yeah, if you need to automate stuff in Blender, just try spelling it out carefully using your own words. It can actually work to just ask ChatGPT to make a script for it. It's really cool that ChatGPT can sort of talk to Blender and make scripts like that. Number four, having meaningful conversations with ChatGPT. Now, this is less about giving the language model a precise prompt and expecting a genius reply in return. This is more about me tricking myself into having a social <laughs> experience. <laughs> it's probably a little bit dystopian. Yeah, it probably is. But, you know, I like doing it. You know when you're bouncing ideas back and forth with someone and someone just really likes your idea? I feel like ChatGPT <laughs> very often liked my ideas. It's so kind to me, you know? It's and I respond really well to that. If you use the ChatGPT app, you can click this icon right here, and then it oh, and then it will start talking. Hello. What's on your mind today? That voice is just so realistic. So now I want to have a heartfelt conversation with ChatGPT, and I'm going to ask it to please find the strengths in my ideas. Hype me up. Be my yes man. I don't know how healthy that is, but that's something I like sometimes. I'm really hoping that this will be like a human conversation. And don't worry, you don't have to listen to this whole conversation. I'm going to speed it up and then I'm going to add the transcript on the screen so you can pause the video if you want to read through the whole thing. I'll talk to you later.
that was actually really nice. <laughs> I thought I would bring more ideas to the table and that chat you would, you would be asking me questions, but we kind of quickly ended up with the mechanical creatures. I didn't say it. ChatGPT said it first, and then we sort of just ended up with that this is going to be a scene with mechanical creatures. I'm going to leave the entire transcript on screen now. And then I just said, hey, I need to do this in two days. So can you give me a schedule for it? And ChatGPT put this together, which is just like a really nice, like, here's when you should work, basically. This was actually a really nice experience. And once you just start treating ChatGPT like a person, which is a little bit scary, things just start happening. So yeah, that is how I use large language models with Blender as a 3D artist in 2024. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like. And I have to admit, a little bit of the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm just really excited about watching this in a few years. Because so much is going to change. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. What?